So my role as a um, programme participation lead uh, within the integrated care system, uh, otherwise known as the Sussex Health and Care Partnership, uh, includes um, a programme of work around uh, trauma-informed care and how we implement this. So I'm going to run through some slides for you. Um, and I very much want people to think about how does this, how can we all sort of help support each other? Because I think the, what we're trying to develop and what we listened to uh, this morning with, uh, with Warren um, very much describes the, the sort of intention of travel. So um, the trauma-informed implementation group um, is a kind of community of interest, starts up as a community of interest um, and has been developing for um, up to a year now, coming, coming up to a year in November. Um, it's multi-agency, it's uh, an organisation and multidisciplinary as well. We have service users and carers in the, uh, in the um, meetings. Um, I've got lived experience myself of uh, complex PTSD. Um, and have travelled through into this role through patient leadership um, and development. And I co-chair this meeting um, with um, two colleagues, uh, Nick Gray, who is the clinical psychologist input into this, uh, part of the national group on trauma and uh, works with Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. And Sarah, um, Chirilio, I'm going to get her name wrong, uh, who works for the CCG, the commissioning group, um, and she is their trauma-informed lead. Um, so we do have within that group uh, quite a strong element of the uh, third sector, and the strongest element of that is uh, fulfilling lives. Um, and, I, and oddly, I, I first came into contact with um, fulfilling lives and understanding what they were doing by, um, by um, the work that they, they had started to do with the DWP and, um, and Mishka and others um, a few years ago. Um, it's very much about shared decision. It's a slightly different way of working than um, the CCG and other people are sort of perhaps used to in having a very sort of open co-produced platform of um, sharing ideas um, and getting ourselves towards that vision um, that Warren was talking about earlier on. Um, so co-production is the forefront of, of what we're kind of trying to achieve in terms of planning and delivery um, and making sure that we can get training um, for all um, across our integrated care system. Um, there is regional and national interest in, in what we're doing. The, the integrated care systems are fairly new. Um, Sussex is going into a sort of statutory phase um, with, with, um, over the next year or so, um, but I've linked in with the regional team, the national trauma team, um, and we're sort of sharing ideas and, uh, and sort of um, learning together as we go. Um, very much values-based. Um, and I've added this uh, from Warren's uh, talk this morning, actually, about that long-term commitment. I think it's really important. We're sort of here for the, the marathon, not the sprint. Um, and, you know, some of these things will take time to get in, <clears throat> but I think if we do these things together, um, we are definitely going to um, get to where we need to be. Um, the other important thing, and I think is really difficult in large um, system implementation of anything, is the ability to communicate what people are doing, um, especially if it's, um, if it's not a kind of statutory obligation as such, even though um, trauma-informed care is in the long-term plan. Um, the organisations within the healthcare partnership are all of the statutory providers um, and the um, third sector providers um, sort of sitting in that umbrella of partnership working. So the ability to communicate with everybody about what, what each of the parts of the system are doing and how we can, can support and learn from each other to develop this is really, really important. Um, and it's about role modelling as well. It's about um, us as, as those leaders um, developing um, a, a role model, because I do believe, and I've seen that if you're not role modeling something like co-production or partnership working, um, sharing power, um, et cetera, people don't really understand what it is and they're, they're not likely to understand that either. Um, from what we listened to earlier on as well, I actually added this in from Beryl Institute, um, piece of work around what, what's meaningful to patients um, and a global survey 
um, told us that 71%, the highest ranked thing that people found most important was being listened to. Uh, and the second one, communicate. Third one, courtesy and respect. Um, and actually taking pain seriously, which I think was the, was the most sort of interesting one, was, was sort of quite lower down. So the first thing was about being listened to. And I think that really sort of um, spoke to Warren's um, uh, um, talk earlier on. This is a slide that I've taken from our um, regional network and where we're at so far of what we understand. Um, so in terms of the strengths, um, it will be most successful when the approach is universally and proportionately understood and practiced. It's an approach which can be applied across systems, in places, across services and in individual interactions. So we're looking at those sort of different levels of where we can, where we can bring in trauma-informed care and it has to be everywhere and everyone's business. Um, and it's likely to benefit the workforce as well as patients, service users and communities. Um, there's been an awful lot of work and actually um, as, uh, probably a bit contrary to Warren um, earlier on, um, it is that, the, that there weren't quite a lot of national conversations about the COVID response. Uh, and again, I think that was, that was more of a, a huge community of interest rather than, um, you know, a sort of uh, uh, maybe a national direction of travel. But um, there was enough people that got into a room um, to have the conversations that we have things like um, the staff wellbeing um, hubs that have been delivered through the ICS and a number of other things. Um, as well as the community work stream within the ICS trying to deliver services further down into community. Um, so that there are sort of a lot of things that are lining up um, in a positive direction. Um, the limitations that we have. Um, Trauma-informed care is going to be understood and um, implemented differently in different systems and services. And we need to allow for that kind of, um, that, that, um, that sort of difference. Um, and um, as long as we're going towards the same aims and the same values, um, we will get to that best practice, but things do need to be shaped slightly differently in different places. The understanding and application of TIC will vary across systems, kind of just said that really. And I think the most important one, the one we put on bold here, is about it's a change in culture that will not be achieved through the implementation of a set of standards but a cycle of continual reflection and improvement. Um, and much um, has still to be learned about the implementation and impact of um, trauma-informed care. And I think this is where Fulfilling Lives has really delivered that sort of strength in understanding with the lived experience that it's used within uh, its work with the, um, the DWP and, um, and other people um, and uh, housing and others, um, just around how do we measure an impact in a way that the system is going to understand and like. Um, so this is a sort of driver diagram that we've developed, and this is a set of change ideas uh, based around how we become a trauma-informed system. And so this just gives us some um, um, sort of key things that we're kind of working towards um, that are going to help this. Um, it's, not, um, it's not exhaustive. Um, but I think the interesting thing about the change ideas is, is how much is around um, co-production and service user um, um, led and um, stuff. Uh, sorry, I can't think of a better word for that. Um, and so um, the change ideas here are making sure that we're doing um, and make uh, that we've got service user experience in design and delivery from the start. That's a really difficult thing to do in a complex system. Um, but we're, we're certainly pushing for that change. Um, creative, creating effective tools for measurement, um, development, developing partners and relationships. Um, the adoption of the four um, PIs, um, which are a service user sort of um, model of um, principles and values. Um, and I will stick something in the chat box about that um, when I finish talking. Um, and you can probably read the rest there, but. Um, Utilising six system expertise, and one of those things that um, I really want to be able to do is, is to put um, the platform of what you're doing today um, at, at the sort of centre of our trauma-informed um, responses, if we can. Um, bespoke leadership and organisational training, for example, um, and so on. So we've got all these sort of different ideas that we're working through. Um, the measuring impact bit, um, it's open-ended. It's always under tension. 
there's always a tension between what we need to do. And I think um, um, the DWP were describing that in terms of the, the national political narrative um, against putting people first. Um, that tension will always be there to some extent. And it's how, how do you negotiate through that tension? Um, I really like the idea of Warren saying we need to incentivize what we're doing, um, especially with GPs. Um, and to answer that question earlier on, um, we have delivered some trauma-informed care training to GPs. It's not enough. We have a number of GP surgeries that are under the SAFE um, surgery campaign around asylum seekers and refugees. I think that's really helpful and supportive and, and part of that way towards that journey. Um, but other ways that we're thinking about of uh, being able to measure the impact of um, uh, trauma-informed care in our system is the service user-led inquiries, which are um, the mystery shopping and those types of things that have been, been talked about today already. Um, but other things that we've thought about are that things like trust and safety in of themselves are already measured in some degree or another in, in the system around mental health, especially um, other places, but they're not actually joined. And one of the incentives of, um, of creating an open, transparent um, inquiry into safety will be how, how trustworthy is an organisation, for example. Um, there's also the health inequalities improvements. Now, as we move through our health, health inequality agenda, um, it, it must be very much driven by the trauma-informed care narrative. Um, and measuring those impacts will help um, us sort of um, uh, do that. Uh, we did think about yesterday, we were thinking about improving CQC reporting standards to include trauma-informed um, questioning, uh, as well as a staff survey. Um, so every year, NHS um, is, is, the, um, is an enormous employer. I think it's the largest in the UK and the fourth or fifth largest in the world, I can't remember. Um, but staff survey will be really um, um, enlightening. And, and it's so important. I've written that twice, which I shouldn't have done. Um, and patient experience measures, of course. So what are our next steps? Um, so we've got the... Um, We've got 193,000 in terms of funding to create a sort of central team um, to develop a, um, a leadership group, uh, which will comprise of, of again, multi-organisation. Um, we're going to go through a, um, a process of, of uh, increasing the governance and assurance that we need to have at, at, the, uh, um, at, the, at the assurance end. Sorry, I said that twice. Um, develop a training strategy so that we're not going to um, stop or slow down what people are doing, but we're going to help improve um, and coordinate and link up. Um, and, you know, we're going to be going to the executive. We, we've got buy-in from the um, chief uh, nurses, for example. Um, this is being now presented into the Mental Health Collaborative Board. Um, and what we need to do is then identify what else we need to do um, to make this happen. Um, so I'm going to stop my share there because the most important thing for me is about listening to people and having sort of thoughts and ideas. Um, I'm quite optimistic. I think I share Warren's optimism about what we're doing. Um, I think there are the pockets of good practice that are happening. And I think we need to um, have a solidarity around joining up um, all of the different things that we're doing across the system. Um, and two, two of the most amazing um, examples are being shared today, um, I think, with the, uh, with the housing and that DWP uh, presentation we heard, um, which is, you know, really inspirational, and really inspiring. If we can change, um, you know, the DWP, what else can we change? So I'm going to stop sharing and open it back to um, Joe. Thank you. Um, yeah, I can't sorry. see. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I couldn't find my, couldn't find a way to turn my video back on then. Thank <laughs> you so much, Louise. That was really great. Um, and it's just great to hear how the integrated care system is really embracing, embracing the work and really recognising the importance of trauma-informed working and, and also putting resources in. So that sounds like, so 193,000 to actually put some dedicated staff in. Is that, is, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been doing this as a community of interest. 
um, Warren's description of the, um, um, the talked about the, the colorful rainbow um, of, you know, increasing, uh, no, which one was it? I'm trying to find it, you know, the organizational commitment and so on. Um, you know, we, we are quite a long way along that journey, um, mm -hmm. I think, um, but it all starts with that community of interest and it's, and it's the willing, um, yes. you know, it's, it's the coalition of the willing. Um, uh, and, um, you know, we, we've got um, some resource behind the community of the willing, which then cascades out of that is that kind of leadership group so we can actually crack on and get on with things. Um, I do remember having a conversation with Mishka, Misha, sorry, about um, four years ago about this and, and, and we couldn't quite start it because there were no resources um, mm -hmm. and um, you know but now we have got some resources and you know buy-in back up um, and that's growing uh, so you, you know th th there is a kind of place for us um, at that table. Yes and it feels like the the work that you're leading within the integrated care system could be a really good driver for the rest of us across the wider network to really get on board and actually continue this conversation and form a bit even bigger coalition. Absolutely. I mean, what, what we, we do need to kind of, get, you know, sort of get things so that we've got sight and that communication between, you know, the different things that are happening and drawing them up and, and really learning from each other and supporting each other mm -hmm. and that role modelling um, of, you know, what trauma-informed care is. You know, we need to treat everybody with kindness, tolerance, flexibility uh, and... We, we, you know we can do all this together your resources around you know the measuring impact i think that work from the dwp is really really important i think it's 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 absolutely um groundbreaking absolutely groundbreaking what's happened there with um with the two people that that um that, that were on the call and the others um and you know that the the uh, what's the word um courage in you know, that absolute courage and bravery of 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 the DWP in this region to, to invite people in and do that. And, you know, um, just hats off to it. What it demonstrates is that we can, we can do this and we can do this in, in, you know, environments where we might think we can't do it. Uh, yes, how do we do it? And, and you've definitely showed that. Yeah. And I think, I mean, the, I think fulfilling lives, we want to, you know, we, we've had the, the luxury of being, you know, funded outside of the main commission system. So we've had that amazing opportunity to actually take the time. Um, and I'm, I think we're all very mindful of what, how, how fortunate we've been to actually do that. But we've got eight months left and we want to accelerate this work. We want to use the resources we've got in the remaining months of uh, us being operational to help to, to help, all, you know, colleagues across across organisations to, to really like embed this work and join it up because we know we didn't invent this stuff. This stuff's going on. There's just pockets. A lot of it is about joining up the dots yeah. and facilitating the conversations and enabling the real sharing of resources and communication and support 